In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can use the Flip Normals iKit for Maya with the render engines of V-Ray and Arnold. The setup is exactly the same. The only difference is that they're using different shaders, but that's not something you have to worry about. The very first thing we have to do is we have to set the project. We go to File, Set the Project. Then we go to the VFX directory. And then we set this directory to the project. This is so that all the textures are going to be working the way they are, meaning that they're all using relative paths now, so there's no reason to repath anything. Everything should just work for now. Then if we want to use the iKit for a character, an existing character like this, which is most likely what you want to do, we go to File, Import, then we choose the directory which, we are, which the iKit comes in, and then you can choose either Arnold or V-Ray. I'm going to choose Arnold for now. Then we scroll down just a little bit and disable use namespaces. And then we hit set resolve to clashing nodes. This just means that there, are, there, is no, there are no namespaces on the actual names. It's going to come in the way it's designed. So now we hit import. And now you can see that we have a little character, a little eye group down here. And if we open it up, this is what happens. By default, the, the blue eyes are visible. If we hit the F key, we can go down here. We can see what happens. If we enable textures now, you can see that these are all working. If you want to see the different eyes, you simply just hide the blue eye, then you unhide the brown eye. As a little tip as well, if you want to see what's going on without a wireframe, you can go to show and selection highlighting, and now you can select them without it being it interfering with what you're looking at. So click the brown eye, hide that. We can look at the different ones. So we can look at the green eye, the hazel eye, the gray eye. And then you can see at the bottom, we have a blend shape group as well. You don't really have to worry about this. This is to control the dilation. If we want to dilate the eyes, we enable the eye we want. Then we open it up. And here you can see there are two uh, meshes for the iris. We have iris blue dilation and iris blue neutral. If we want to dilate it, we have to select the iris blue dilation. Hit control A to go into the channel box. And then under the channel box, we have dilation. And if we set this to minus one, you can see it opens all the way up. If we set it to zero, it's going to be neutral. And if we set it to one, it's going to contract like this. So this is really cool. It means you can really easily animate the, the contraction and um, dilation. So just set this back to zero, and that's going to be neutral. If you don't care about dilation, you can simply hide this and use the neutral one. By default, all of these are using the dilation as, the, as a default. So if you want to move the eye into position, what I recommend doing is you select the entire eye group and then you move the eye group. We're just going to go and enable selection highlighting again. The reason I want to move the entire eye group is that it's very easy then to change what eye you want. So we can now go up here, move it into place. Something like that. Hit Alt-D to deselect your uh, object, and now you can see what's going on. So if we want to now hide the blue eyes and look at something else, we can just hide it, hit the H key, and now we can get the brown eye. This is why we moved the group initially. So in order to get the eyes over to the other side, what we can do, we can simply duplicate the entire group. I just want to be have the blue eyes visible. We can take the entire group and we can duplicate that. But the problem is if we just hit Control D, the blend shape is not going to propagate through. It's not going to be connected. So if we want, we want to actually duplicate this with the blend shape enabled, meaning if you care about dilation, we go to Edit, Duplicate Special, click a little box next to it, and then we make sure that we hit in, Duplicate Input Graph, which is going to duplicate all the actual, or which is going to actually connect everything up properly. So then we can apply, and now we have the eyes. I also recommend that you name it right away as well, just so you have control of what's going on. And you name the eyes based on this is the character left eye. It's still screen right, but it's character left. And then we can name this R eyes. There we go. And we can just remove the one in the bottom as well. So now we can take this entire one and we can uh, we can move this guy over like so. Just so it fits, up, fits approximately. You can also scale them up and down. 
But be aware that this uses a displace map, so and the displace map is tied to the scale. So if you do if you do change the displace map, that means that you will have to if you do change the scale, you will have to rebalance the displace map for it. Also, as a heads up as well, these are using specific maps for the different colors, meaning that you can't just replace this eye here. You can't just go in, change the iris blue, and change this to the, um, the brown one, because this actually has a different map for displacement and specular and all that than um, the brown one. So that's why we have different folders for them or different groups. The eye kit also ships with two different scleras. The sclera is the white part of the eye. So different ethnicities have different uh, different color of the sclera. So we're providing one which is bright like this and one which is dark. So we're going to be showing that for the brown eye. So here is just the default brown eye. But if you're doing having a character and you want the sclera to be darker, you simply select the uh, sclera brown. Then we uh, just going to disable that so we can see. We right click, use existing material, and then we can choose the um, sclera dark. And there we go. Now you can see that this has been applied to it. And now we have two different eyes, which is kind of cool. If you want to change the texture resolution, you can almost easily do that. The quickest way of doing that is to open up the hypershade. And then we can find the material. We can simply just click on the material. Let's say we want to change the resolution for the scalera. Just go all the way to the left, also all the way to the right. Click select. And then we can bring it into the hypershade. And then you can see that there are two maps atti attached to this one. This one goes into the subsurface, and this goes into the transmission. And you can see we call this scalera albedo 2K. And here it goes into the folder, which is using 2K map. And now we can... Uh, simply replace this with a different map as well. So if we go all the way up out now, or one up, then we can change this to 512, and we can pick the um, Sclera Dark Albedo 512, which is now going to be using the 512 map, which is just very nice and handy, because it you probably don't need a full 4K map or a 2K map. For most shots, 512 is really enough. By default, we are using 2K, just because we can, <laughs> but if you if your shots are gonna be something like this, you don't have to. But if you're going crazy close up, a 2K map is gonna work. Or if you're going even crazier close up, you a 4K map is gonna be nice. But 4K is real for extreme cases. So once you have that, then we can uh, make a little region. Then we can start to render this. And there we go, instant nice eyes for Arnold. And if you are using V-Ray, the setup is exactly the same. As a last little tip, when you're lighting eyes, you really want to use HDRI maps for this. It's really hard to get nice natural eyes when it comes to lighting and using just area lights. I highly recommend that you get some nice HDRIs like this. This is from HDRI Haven, which just makes it really, you just get this a lot of life into your eyes by using HDRIs. So I hope that was useful. If you want more information, we have a PDF which accompanies this video as well.